What's up, guys? It's Lily with Ammo.com, and today's topic is really simple. We're going to be going over ammunition anatomy. So we're going to go over what comprises a piece of ammunition, the functions of those pieces, and a little bit of extra information that you might find useful. Let's get started. So years ago, when I was working at a range, I was walking the line to make sure everyone was safe, and I noticed a lady flailing around, and every time she took a shot. And obviously that's unsafe. So I approached her, asked her what was going on, and she said, watch. So she took a shot. She did her same matrix move again and said that the bullets were coming back at her. And I realized right away, obviously that's not the case. I love the confidence that she thought she was dodging bullets. I wish I had that kind of confidence, uh, but that's not what was happening. What was happening was the casing was being expelled from the firearm, hitting the wall and bouncing back at her. She was under the impression that when she took that shot, that shot was actually returning somehow. Uh, so I pressed pause and I explained to her how her firearm was cycling. I explained to her how ammunition worked. And obviously that allowed her to be a lot more safer, stop doing what she was doing, and also relax and realize she didn't have to dodge returning bullets. Um, but this also made me realize that there are people out there who might be new to firearms, new to ammunition, who just don't have a basic foundation um, and understanding of how it works. So this video is really simple. A lot of you may know the concept, but for those of you who are just getting into ammunition, this video is gonna be really helpful. For today's video, we're gonna be using Hornaday Frontier 556, but before we even get into the ammunition, I wanna talk about the details that are found on the box. This information is really important as you get to learn ammunition. So 20 rounds, that's just telling you how much ammo is in the box. 556 is the caliber. It is important to buy the right caliber for the right gun. So that's useful. Grains. Grain is a unit of measurement. 7,000 grains equals one pound. That information is telling you how heavy or how light that projectile is. Apart from that, you have velocity. Velocity is telling you how fast that projectile is going to travel. So coupling that information together, it's very important to start to get to know how that affects ammunition. So depending on the grain and the velocity, that's going to determine is this projectile going to travel very fast and have a lot of penetration? Is it going to travel slower but pack a punch? And all this is useful information when hunting, competition shooting for self-defense. Um, it also can impact recoil management. So these are things that you want to take into account when finding the right ammunition for what you're trying to do. Moving on to the ammo, this is what you'll typically see. I'm going to go ahead and break this down a bit further just so you can see each individual piece. But just so you get an idea, this is going to be the projectile. You've got your casing here and at the base you have your primer. So that's what you're going to be able to see from the outside when you take a piece of ammunition out of the box. But let's get a little bit deeper than that today. So this is your projectile. This is the piece that leaves the barrel and penetrates the target. If you see the ridge here that's showing you where it seats into that casing, and it actually seats down a lot further than you think. So the projectile is actually longer than what's visible when you're just holding a piece of ammunition. After that, you have your casing. That's what houses everything together, okay? And holds it all in place. So your projectile would go on the end here. Inside is gonna be your propellant. And at the base, you're gonna have your primer. This is the piece that gets expelled from the firearm typically, or you have to manually remove it at the end. This is the hot brass that they're referring to when they say be cautious that it doesn't roll down your shirt or get caught in your glasses, which inevitably at some point in your uh, firearms endeavors, you are going to get burnt by a piece of hot brass. Um, I've had it stick in my glasses and burn off half my eyebrow. You're not going to get that mortally wounded. It's fine. Don't freak out. Okay. <laughs> Handle it safely and responsibly. Um, but this is the piece that you'll see on the ground at the range. Some people pick these up and they use them for reloading. Some people just trash them. It really just depends what you want to get into when it comes to ammunition. At the base, you have your primer. This piece does come out. I didn't take it out for this video, um, but it's like a super small little flat piece. Almost looks like a little tiny battery or coin, um, but that gets struck by the firing pin, causing sparks, igniting the propellant that's found inside the casing. That causes a pressure buildup that allows your projectile to travel downrange. Now, inside the casing is going to be your propellant, okay? That's going to be your powder uh, that does get ignited from the sparks from the primer. Now, what's in it? These days, manufacturers have proprietary recipes, um, so that's going to be a secret. But overall, all you need to know is this is what gets ignited, burns very, very quickly, causing that chain reaction to allow your gun to fire. 
And that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed the content, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be notified when we upload our next video. And please visit ammo.com for all your ammunition needs. Also, feel free to drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. If you have questions, if there's anything you want to see, this channel is going to be about ammunition. So ballistics, hunting, practical uses, uh, comparison. So if there's anything you're interested in, any questions you have, drop them below and we'll get working on that content.